I don't know how much longer I'll be here. Maybe I'll have another five years. Maybe with the advances on oncology, they'll find new treatments for my cancer that will extend my life. Maybe I'll be gone before you hear this. My predicament is, well, rather unpredictable. But I'm prepared for either contingency, or at least I'm getting prepared. I have some things I'd like to take care of first. Bomberan, you know, <laughs> bomb, bomb, bomb. <laughs> anyway, uh, I would be launching airstrikes not only in Iraq, but in Syria. No, no, he says there's nothing new that way. They just made the decision to go to war with Iraq. He said, I guess it's like we don't know what to do about terrorists, but we've got a good military and we can take down governments. And um, he said, I guess if, if the only tool you have is a hammer, every problem has to look like a nail. So I came back to see him a few weeks later, and by that time we were bombing in Afghanistan. I said, are we still going to war with Iraq? And he said, oh, it's worse than that. He said, he reached over on his desk, he picked up a piece of paper, and he said, I just, he said, I just got this down from upstairs, meaning the Secretary of Defense office today, and he said, this is a memo that describes how we're going to take out seven countries in five years, starting with Iraq and then Syria, Lebanon, Libya, Somalia, Sudan, and finishing off Iran. This video that you see right now is of yet another incident overseas involving Iran and one of our ships. Four Iranian Revolutionary Guard vessels harassed our destroyer, the USS Nitz, yesterday near the Strait of Hormuz, conducting a high-speed intercept closing within a short distance. Our destroyer was conducting a routine transit in the vicinity of the internationally recognized strait. Hmm. Wow. Blow them out of the water. Get rid of them. That's the Strait of Hormuz right there. That, that is one of the most... Uh, prolific oil shipping channels. It may be the most pro pro prolific oil shipping channels in the world, along with the Suez Canal. They start playing around like that. This has happened before. They've right. actually mined the Strait of Hormuz, threatening the U.S. warships, our, our, our aircraft carriers and destroyers, telling us that they we're going to blow up. It's time. It is very concerning, absolutely. And we, we've always been very worried about the Straits of Hormuz. But at the same time, it's not as if this is a a new area for uh, unrest and things to worry about, you know, so we'll, although the specifics of the naval exercises are extremely concerning, the reality of the broader picture is, I wouldn't say steady state, but it's like constantly like this. If they do something here, it's going to be not just the U.S. that comes after them. You know, you're going to see Saudi coming after them, China. It, it'll be cataclysmic. This is a Fox News alert. Iran warning it has full control of the Persian Gulf and the Strait of Hormuz, which are vital to the transport of oil, of course. This says tensions escalate over nuclear sanctions. Benjamin Hall is live for us in London. Benjamin. Hi, Sandra. Ever since these uh, sanctions took hold, the Iranian economy has been in free fall. They are under pressure from inside and from out. And what we're seeing now is them push back in whatever way they can. That's military threats in some cases. That is uh, denials of their action. That is legal action in some cases to try and get these sanctions revoked. Well, today, in escalating rhetoric, the head of the Iranian Navy announced that Iran has full control of the strategic Persian Gulf and the Straits of Hormuz, through which 20% of the world's oil goes. And he said that the U.S. Navy does not belong there. Iran, who recently carried out naval exercises in the region, also suggested, and not for the first time, that it could now take military action to block oil exports in relation to those sanctions, which is something the U.S. has always said would certainly result in swift retribution. Separately, the head of the Revolutionary Guard has also now taunted the U.S., saying they are afraid of a war, and that they would never prevail in a conflict because they know they would suffer. But it's Iran that is suffering. The currency is worth half what it was at the beginning of the year. Food and medicines are all too expensive for the average person. And with new sanctions due to hit oil exports in November, pressure now is constantly building on the government to change. Today, Iran even tried the legal route, going to the UN's highest court to have sanctions lifted, saying that they had violated a little-known 1955 friendship treaty. Iran called the sanctions naked economic aggression and said the U.S. wanted to damage the economy as best it could. And we're hearing from, about change possibly coming from inside. The economic minister stepped down yesterday and now the sense that something really has to give.